WLUW 88.7 FM Chicago. And next up is the live from the Heartland Show. Needs to satisfy his soul. Uh, welcoming to the, the, the Life in the Heartland microphone is Ken Dunn, founder of the Resource Center in Chicago. Ken is one of the uh, longest serving sustainable artists in our city uh, on all sorts of levels, probably best known as a recycling king back in the 70s when he first started and still is recycling, but so many other things since. Ken, thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, as we got talking about your joining me uh, today, we got immediately into climate collapse, and is the city prepared for it? So let me start there. Chicago ready for the climate collapse? Well, we have a big challenge. Uh, I think we first need to acknowledge that uh, the state of our civilization is not uh, very promising. Uh, not just Chicago, but all aspects. We're finding that uh, appearance often trumps reality. That uh, Climate, well, on many things we could just state that the state of our civilization is in imminent collapse. Uh, co climate collapse is happening. That is, our species and species we uh, rely on is not insured to survive well into the future if we don't acknowledge the need to do real things. And so that goes with democracy and civility and equality and justice and, and community and public safety, all of these things are falling short of our ideals of what a city can be. So I think we have to just forget about applying a little more of the same techniques. We need more energy, coal and gas. No. Uh, we have passed the petroleum and coal age. I think we should consider ourselves in the carbon age, and it's not that we are rewarded for consuming it. We have to be rewarded for doing the right thing with it. Carbon that's in our forest should remain there as much as possible. Carbon that's in our soil, rich soils have 30 to 35 percent organic matter. Uh, so we often complain that Brazil is losing the Amazon irresponsibly. Well. The plains, the richest uh, farmland in the, uh, in, in the world, perhaps, used to be three foot deep of topsoil, and that housed a lot of carbon. And by uh, industrial agriculture, we're down to eight to 12 inches of topsoil, and all of that uh, housed carbon is gone. So we have to get back to uh, organic, uh, sustainable agriculture producing real food rather than commodities that are sold and shipped and, um, and process into what's even probably a public health crisis. So we are not ready. But I think if we acknowledge that we have a unique uh, requirement, we who are now alive have to chart the new course. And we have to start thinking of an economy if as if the people's quality of life are important, not an economy that has the ability to do th things internationally, amass wealth here and there. We need to uh, look at each local community. What are their resources and what are their needs? So if we were uh, distressed about a neglected community on the south or west side, we would notice they've got 50% uh, vacant land, 50% unemployment, and not good else access to healthy food. A reasonable person would say, focus on producing farms on that vacant land to produce jobs for the population and healthy food for uh, everybody that lives there. So we don't always want to go to get Amazon or Whole Foods to do what they're not inclined to do for profit. We have to find new approaches, and that's in everything. So um, when you talk of collapse of everything, or near collapse of everything we hold dear, we have to think of, well, it's shipwreck. But there is advantage to shipwreck. We have to use all of our ability to really figure out what are appropriate actions and what will uh, help us meet the challenges, working together to 
put some boards together to form a raft and then together find uh, a safe harbor to rebuild our civilization. So we are at that challenge. Chicago's model is herbs and orto. Uh, we've planted meeting gardens all over the place. We've covered buildings with green roofs and even some solar panels on occasion. Uh, some of the fleet the city runs has more efficient engines. We have more LED buildings than most major cities. Are we trying to reduce our carbon footprint? Well, I think in the wrong direction. We have also, to just uh, uh, rely less on cars, drastically less on cars, not just uh, fossil or uh, petroleum based cars, all cars. There's an immense carbon footprint for every car. Um, just, you know, the steel, the aluminum, uh, the plastics. Uh, so. You'd be in favor of uh, the mayor's proposed congestion tax on Uber and Lyft rides, I, mean, I imagine. Absolutely. And allow them to operate at all if they figure out how to get. Um, by uh, computer technology, they can have uh, every vehicle on the street, every few blocks, picking up a person and dropping off a person. So um, we should uh, promote the ride-sharing uh, uh, company that can actually get three people in a car, wherever they're going, and connect with uh, public transportation. That's our asset, is public transportation in the city. Absolutely. So, so uh, you know, green rooftops and everything, they're a little bit more the appearance. Uh, it's good and it helps, but our, our changes need to be stop putting up these energy inefficient buildings 50 to 100 stories high. They call, uh, cost a lot of energy to heat and cool and even to, trans to transport people on the elevators. We need to get back to a livable walk walking community that focuses on local community where people can communicate with each other and find common goals and get involved. I think primarily we need to empower every citizen to uh, insist on best, best practices everywhere. And that's not just in uh, good schools, so it's also in how uh, how we use our asphalt and our concrete. Uh, we've got to saying we fill potholes every season or two or three times a season. You don't fill a pothole. They can be patched to be permanent. Both concrete and asphalt can be kept patched. But our, uh, it's given Alderman pride that they can get the trucks in two or three times a year to pass the streets. We support them for that. We should get back to uh, building infrastructure for a hundred years. And uh, so we need to focus totally on local communities and not bringing in Amazon and other jobs that only the tech communities. We need jobs for real people in real communities. I'd like you to talk a little bit about the Resource Center, um, possibly best known for recycling, but you've done many other things since, a lot of big composting operation maybe talk a little bit about your moving soil from empty lot to empty lot, but what's the work of the Resource Center these days? Well, I came from academics, and I soon realized as great joy you can have in academics, we are leaving a age that uh, functions with academics. People are not reading books and learning from them. They need to be shown there are alternatives, and so we started um, recycling as a, a demonstration that citizens can make a difference and it doesn't have to be uh, come down from the president or the, uh, the mayor. Uh, so we started in Hyde Park, it grew uh, robustly and with Harold Washington he recognized our system would be appropriate citywide. We had a contract uh, to do that. Unfortunately, after the mayor died, they stopped complete payments for our service and said, your contract was with Mayor Washington and not, uh, sounds like some of the nonsense we're getting out of Washington yeah, now. Yeah, sure uh, does. So uh, what we have to do is every citizen needs to insist on best pro practices everywhere. And uh, Trump isn't the first to disregard the public well-being for his own enrichment or re-election. Uh, 
Aldermen in Chicago and mayors in Chicago have done it for at least 50 years and probably longer. And our city has suffered immensely. Our budget could be half what it is now if there weren't this notion that uh, the city is run for the aldermen and the people that get the next mayor and alderman elected. We can need to get back into best practices. Whenever we build something, build it to last 100 years. And, um, so, and I think we only do that by starting in local communities, emphasizing communities that are functioning. And the best way to get a community functioning and away from crime and gang is not sending more peace there, not more police, but actually jobs for everyone. So that everybody can raise a family, maintain a home, and feel they're invested in the quality of life that's being delivered to them. And so I would suggest we need not a, a city economy based on high tech, but a, a local economy based on what each community needs. And if it needs healthy produce, let's produce it there. Um. Many people know the recycling business hasn't been going that well, in part because China's not buying our trash anymore. Um, can we build local markets to reuse our stuff? Um, we, and how would that happen? What would that look like? Well, that's what we started recycling about. Uh, the notion is complete cycles have worked uh, on this planet forever. We're now breaking up those complete cycles. and. So the complete cycle with materials that should go back to become what it was in the first place. And in fact, that's the system of recycling we crafted and Harold Washington chose that uh, uh, glass bottles would uh, be available in the quality that is required by a local glass manufacturer. Same with all other materials. And we are able to do that. We found that we had to keep glass separate from all other materials because uh, plastic, steel, aluminum, and other paper is all compromised with the glass. So uh, recycling was discovered to be a profit center for our multinational waste haulers, and they introduced single sort, which everything goes together to go into plants that cost, cost 10 to 50 million dollars for machines to sort them. Well, they can't once the glass is contaminating everything else. And they also discovered that uh, since there's more shipping from China here, uh, waste can go cheaply back to China. And so the materials that would not be used by local industries were first shipped a bit to Mexico in the late 70s. and. Uh, most recently, almost all to China, both paper and plastics, to soil to be used by any firm here in the United States, uh, went to China. And what China was discovering is once there, they had firms that would separate out a little of the good stuff and burn the rest. And I think it was even noted that China's smoke yeah. album even uh, uh, reached the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So we're getting our smoke back. So we just have to be done with this international profit-making system and find uh, an economy based as if the quality of life in our local communities really mattered and keep our economy and our values there. The, the communities where value has been extracted from the last 50 years should get our first attention of how to build jobs for everyone in that local community. Can you talk a little bit about composting and how you've used the art of composting to rebuild industrialized soil in the city? Yeah. As I think we have to recognize our being a coal and petroleum based economy, we have to be a carbon based economy and just be responsible for what we do with carbon and um, turning uh, the uh, uh, richness of our uh, farms into commodities that have to be processed to produce food that perhaps doesn't serve our health. Has, we have to be done with that. We have to produce real food and like Ma Michael Pollan said, real food is has a label that you can read and pronounce. Probably three or four items and it's probably something fresh you pick out of a farm uh, near your house where you can walk to get it up. 
um, these modern techniques of uh, are we all finding on city streets, residential streets, two or three delivery trucks, one delivering food, three or four delivering packages. You can't even uh, get down the city street on your bicycle anymore because of too many parks delivering things. We've got to get back to a local economy that knows what the community needs and it's produced locally and sold locally and we all can walk to a, uh, a farm and buy produce in the farm stand there that's fresh and healthy. So let's be realistic for a moment. Chicago has a short growing season. How do you use warehouse greenhouses in a sustainable way to supplement our food chain? Well, do we really get all our food locally, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, um, our experience with greenhouses is there might not be a good trade-off for heated greenhouses which do, uh, they suffer from lacking of the natural environment which plants need. So it's much better to grow plants during our growing season, but as you say it's short, there are some foods that can be grown year-round in just plastic season extenders. No heat, external uh, heat required. Uh, there are crops that can survive a frost. Such uh, as? Um, spinach will survive into January. Uh, mosh can survive year-round. It can freeze, the soil can freeze in this plastic protection, but as soon as it uh, thaws out, it starts growing again. But the production is about a tenth of what it is in this uh, growing season with the warmth and the sun being much more available. So we have to go back to what civilizations did uh, previously. They um, uh, grow uh, crops that could sto store for the winter, um, and they had devices for pickling and canning and fermentation. Uh, fermentation. So um, actually, uh, in our envisioning a city that's supporting its own food supply, uh, Rick Bayless did a fundraiser for us, and we bought a a huge warehouse, 220,000 220, square feet with six adjoining acres, to start um, having a local food system distribution point. There would be a uh, industrial kitchen there for preserving some of the summer crop for use in the winter, upgrading into salsas and other things, tomatoes, baking bread out of the bananas that would otherwise be composted that arrive here daily, that uh, happen to be arriving not at the right time and can't uh, take the for-profit five to ten days of getting to the consumer. So we now have this facility that can be full of freezers and uh, food preservation techniques. And uh, so we'll have to learn to experience the joy of the first strawberries of the winter, or, or the spring, not expecting strawberries year-round. So we have to get back to living closely to our planet, exit, it, observing its strengths and weaknesses and adjusting to find joy that we can do it. Quick farm report, some of us are also raising our own eggs in the backyard and other livestock. If the city doesn't regulate us out of, out of existence, it seems like a good point to met, good time to mention that also happening today from 12 to 6 is a fermentation fest. It's at Chicago Patchwork Farms, which is at 2825 West Chicago Avenue. You learn a lot about uh, how you make kimchi and those other sourdough things you might have been thinking you could never do at home. And certainly fits this idea of more local food production. You call to mind a family that spends its time doing what's needed with each other and really find joy in the family unit and in the neighborhood that does these sort of things, which is much different rushing from one appointment to the other, picking up a, a hamburger and a drive through, and uh, family has no time to be a family together to, uh, to relish what is important in life. And, connection with each other and supporting their community. So we need to uh, move back to become a sustainable city in what makes life sustainable and quality. And that's what happens on the local and family level. And we're not pulled from this or that away from being at home and with our neighbors. Uh, listeners of our generation will remember the graduate and the famous point made to Dustin Hoffman about plastics. 
Ah, yes. What the heck are we going to do about plastics? Well, the first thing we have to do is uh, we will have to use plastics for packaging and other purposes for a considerable time. But there is no positive use of plastics. Um, biodegradable plastics might be saving some whales and uh, fishes in our oceans from uh, untimely death, but they just break down the molecular chains of plastic will break down into its in individual molecules. And those individual molecules are being found in groundwater almost everywhere these days, as well as in the oceans, in the oceans, lakes, and rivers. So plastics are forever, and there's not a good place to store our petroleum. Our petroleum should be stayed, should be staying underground, and plastics we can move beyond. And I think we all appreciate the, the texture of a wooden table rather than a plastic table, and just the variety and uh, uh, wood is much better for us to use. And we should keep all wood, all food, out of our landfills. When Mayor Lightfoot, after she prints, sets her budget and maybe gets a school, school strike settled, what's the one thing you would tell her to do if you got a chance to sit down with her? Uh, we have to start with composting available to every household and every business in the city because all of this uh, going to landfill, there methane gas is produced eventually and uh, uh, contributes to climate warming. So the mayor needs to commit to a program of empowering every citizen to do the best for a future citizen. So that would be composting everything and that compost is needed to grow in the city because there is no soil clean enough in this industrial city to grow our food in. Our technique has been to seal the vacant lot with compacted clay six inches and then fill that bowl that's on the vacant lot with two feet of compost. Bowl, I say, because we also need to conserve water. And with an artificial water table of all rainwater staying on the vacant lot allows us to only need irrigation to get the plants started as soon as the roots are down four to six inch and four to six inches you need no more Classically irrigation. that's Ken Dunn painting for us a picture about the way things should be. Thank you Ken Dunn for the Resource Center for joining us on Life in the Heartland this morning. I want to thank everyone who makes this show possible. Our other guests, Adriana Cardona Magugat, Michael and Katie will be back next week. And thanks to music producer Lynn Orman Weiss and James Porter behind the boards and our Loyola videographer Ruja Ku, otherwise known as Coco. Stay tuned for Bob Maravich's Gospel Memories and later James Porter is up with Hoodoo Party. We are listening to Billy Branch doing a little Walter tune. He will be performing tonight at Promontory Point where his CD is being featured. Thank you all.